Good morning, my friends. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm at home and I'm rejoicing because I get so excited when I pack to leave and I am so excited for what the Lord has for me ahead for my trip. And Australia was just a wonderful, wonderful time. Not only did I take the word, which I had done, my, my focus was just to take the word, encourage my friends and those that I don't know there with the word of God. But at the same time, the Lord surprised me where not only did I take the word, but the people there, the women especially, filled up my love tank. You know, Dr. Dobson talks about uh, each child that you are raising has a love tank and sometimes their tanks depletes real quick. And sometimes it's like you have to fill them and they are filled for a while. But some children really, you need to fill up their love tanks and Australia became that for me. I was very, very excited. Not only did they feed me a lot of Armenian food and I had no, no time sometimes especially in the women's meetings, after the meeting, to even fill up my plate. It was filled with such love. And I was like, oh, I wish you'd let me fill up my my uh, plate. But I felt so much love there. And, and the Lord took me all the way to, of course, Perth, which was so far away from uh, Sydney. I had not realized it. It's almost like going from New York to California just going from one side of the country to the other. But I wanted to go because Sona, my friend, she and I graduated from high school almost 50 years ago. Yes, 50 years this summer. And so I wanted to see her and daddy used to go there a lot. He would go there and uh, preach in an Indonesian church, but he always visited Sona and her family. Her dad now is in heaven too, as my dad is in heaven. But her mom, 92 years old, going strong and taking me around the farm. I had such good memories when I came back. I was filled with such good memories. And it, and when I go, I, of course, I knew the change for time. 15-hour flights, yes. But after I got out, it was 15-hour difference of time change. But somehow God's grace just carries me. And I don't really feel that time change. But when I got back home... I mean, it took me quite a few days to get back and uh, get back into the routine of things at home, even though I was very excited. In fact, one night I woke up and I didn't know what room, where I was, and I stood up and I was looking around for the door to see where I am. And then I saw through the door our kitchen and I was so excited and I said, I'm home. And sometimes daddy would tell stories like that, that he would wake up in so many different beds in the air that he didn't even know which way to get out from. But I'm excited today. I want to share God's word with you today because I feel that the Lord gave me such a word in the last few days. And I really want to focus on that. And I want to sing with Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Yes, it's all about him. It's all about him. For God so loved the world. Last night, uh, Terry and I had gone to eat somewhere and the waiter, he was very kind, very, very few words he spoke while he was serving us. And I told Terry, I dug into my um, my purse and I said, I have one more cross in my purse because I fill it up and then I refill it. I said from Jerusalem that daddy had brought and it's just olive wood. But when I tell him there's nothing magical about the cross, but what it does is it reminds us of what Jesus did on the cross. It's just olive wood from Jerusalem, from Bethlehem, and they have carved it. And daddy used to give those out, and I wanted to do that. And when he came to our table, I said to him, you know, I have a cross. And I said, give me your hand. And he was a young man. And I took his hand, and I put the cross on there. And I started telling him, I said, he told me his name. And I said, for God so loved his name, Hayden. And I said, for God so loved Hayden. As soon as I said that, he knelt down by the, by the table and he said, are you from Armenia? And I said, well, no, but I'm an Armenian from Lebanon. 
As soon as I said that, he said, years ago, you came to our school and you spoke about the farmer that went out to sow the seeds. And he said, as soon as you started talking, I remembered the voice and he loved the Lord, but I didn't know if he needed the reminder. And I said, this is your reminder for God so loved you, gave his life. Jesus gave his life on the cross for you that when you believe, you will have eternal life. When I tell people that, they, some of them are filled with tears in their eyes because when they hear God so loved them, them. And so then I said, this is your reminder, but he remembered me from years ago. He said, as soon as you were talking, I, I remembered your voice. And later when we were walking to the car, I told Terry, isn't that interesting that he never said that before? Because I guess I didn't, I just said, thank you. You know, he's refilling our, our uh, waters and, and he was bringing us our food. But when I started talking, he remembered. The remembrance of what God has done is what we need to remember today. And as I was reading in Mark, I'm in Mark, and chapter 4, 24, Jesus, after talking about the sower, and that's where I was about two days ago, when he finished, he said unto them, chapter 4, verse 24 of Mark, and he said unto them, take heed what you hear. Take heed. Take, take careful heed to what you hear. You know, we had a song we used to sing to the kids. Um, oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Take heed what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. It's talking about when we hear God's word, when we hear him speak to us. We have to incline our ears to hear because on uh, Wednesday nights with the Bible study women, we've been doing revelation. And I cannot tell you how many places, even yesterday afternoon, I was visiting with some women in their home and we opened up the Bible. It's an Armenian home and we opened up the Bible and we wanted to read Revelation because they said, we want to know. We want to know what it's saying. And, and these days we need to re re read Revelation all the time. And we happened to be there with the women on Wednesday nights. And when I was looking at it, I saw seven churches that when the Lord spoke to them, every one of them, he finished with chapter um, 2, verse 7. He said, to him that overcomes will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise. And then verse 6, but as thou, and he's telling them these things, so, so he's saying, chapter 7, the first part, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. And then verse 11, he that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. I found seven times to the seven churches, which is speaking to you and I today. These seven churches that he used to preach that these are the churches now. Yes, there is when you go to where these churches were, these churches are not there, but these messages are for us in our churches today. And when we go to verse uh, 17 of chapter two, again, he that had ear to hear. Let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. He that had an ear. And then verse 29 again is so important. When the Spirit of the Lord repeats something over and over, we need to listen. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. And then chapter 3 verse 6, he that an ear to hear. He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. And then 13, again, he that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. And then verse 22. And I just felt like the Lord wanted me to get on today live, just whoever, wherever it's going to go, that we need to hear the word of the Lord. We need to have, we have ears, but we need to have hearing ears because Jesus, when he was speaking about the sower, he said, hear, hear that who he that had an ear, let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches. Verse 22. And of course, when John saw John, the apostle was on the island of Patmos, and he said, he saw this and the angel 
came to him to give him a message. And that is for all of us because it says who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he, verse 3, that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written there for the time is at hand. I don't know about you, but looking at the signs, looking at things happening, we know the time is at hand. I was in the I, I was in the airport in Sydney when I was going to get on the plane to leave, and I knew it was kind of like um, in the afternoon or somewhere in the I, I don't even know what time it was in Pasadena with my family. All of a sudden, everybody started writing on our family post saying, "Did you feel the earthquake? Did you feel the earthquake?" And it was in California. That moment. I got a message from Lebanon on WhatsApp and it was my friend there and she said there was an earthquake and I know at her time it was in the night, almost midnight. So I said, oh, I know, I know my family is safe and they're saying that it didn't really do much damage. She said, no, no, we had an earthquake right here. I just woke up with an earthquake. So for me to hear, and I'm in Australia, I'm hearing from Lebanon and I'm hearing from California, which is an incredible thing with the phone. You can be connected around the world. They were both telling me that there was earthquake. At the same time, of course, Jesus said there will be earthquakes. There will be wars and rumors of wars. And we know that is happening right now. Wars and rumors of wars. And then there will be many things happening, many earthquakes in diverse places, pestilences, but these are just the beginnings. Je these are just the beginnings. And the words of Jesus in Matthew 24 was really incredible when I was reading again because he says, um, take heart, take heart. Don't worry about these things because he says, take heed that no man deceive you because during this time, many shall come saying, I am Christ. So he's telling us, do not be deceived, endure to the end. But at the same time, he's saying, these are just going to come to pass, but they are just the beginning. And the word of God will be preached to many places. So we know, for as the lightning comes in verse 20, 27, for the lightning comes out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And so we know he's coming soon. We know, but we need to live with that expectancy. I was reading a commentary the other day and it said, every generation lived with the expectancy that Jesus can come at any time. We need to read the word. We need to get our news, first news from the word of God. We need to have ears that are listening to hear his word to us because every generation was waiting expectantly. And I know that even Peter, when Jesus left, because Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. When I go to prepare a place, I'm coming back to take you. And he does come back to take us. Either we die, he takes us, or he's coming back to take the church. And that was what Peter wrote. Brethren, the coming of the Lord is so soon. And if he was living with that expectancy, imagine today, which is almost, I believe, midnight, almost close to midnight where the trumpet will sound and we need to be ready. And when I was, list, I was thinking about listening here and I thought about Samuel, of course, when he heard the voice of the Lord, he didn't recognize it yet. He had never heard the voice of the Lord. So he ran to Eli saying, did you call me? And Eli sent him back. But the third time Eli said, when you go back and you hear it again, you say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And we learned that as a child by heart, my mom would teach us God's word diligently every day. We learned God's word and we would say that, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And a listening ear, I believe, is explained here in Proverbs chapter 2 by Solomon when he wrote this, my son. If thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with you, so that you incline your ear. There's the word, incline. I have a friend who is um, really not 100%, but 90% he's, she's deaf. And she went to Israel with us when we went on the tour a few months uh, last year. And But she reads lips. But when I go to lunch with her, she and I 
are so focused. I am so focused on what she's saying so that I can understand what she's saying. And she's so focused on what I'm saying, reading my lips, that I had a picture of what it means to incline your, your heart, to incline your ear to hear from the word of the Lord. We have to incline. We have to be so focused. You know, when my daddy used to leave and in Lebanon, you could go to the airport and you could see them walking in that last departure gate. And when they would go in, dad would talk to us because we were all crying and, you know, five of us would be at the airport and many others would come to say goodbye to him. And there was so much noise there, but we focused Oh, when daddy was going to say last moment what he was going to say to us as he went and we knew he would be gone for a month or three weeks or a month whatever and that's how i saw the picture of how we incline our ear and focus on the lord and it says when you incline so that you incline your ear unto wisdom and apply your heart to understanding because whatever you hear is going to go into your heart Whatever you hear and you take it from the Lord. Of course, people speak so many things to us. I was hearing a pastor yesterday and um, on YouTube from Australia, Brother Nazo, and I heard part of the message where he said, it has to be the, the lies people speak have to have the revolving doors where it just comes back and goes back. You don't listen to the lies people are speaking into your ears. Don't take it too hard. But when the Lord Jesus speaks to us with his word, this is his word. We have it in our hands. What a privilege that we can read his word, incline our ear to hear him and apply our hearts to wisdom so that. And if you cry after knowledge and lift up your voice of understanding, if you, if you seek her as silver searches for her as for hid treasures, then you shall understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. So today we need to have listening ears. You and I need to incline our ear to hear the word of the Lord to us. And when we read it, let's have listening ears so that what he says goes into our hearts, settles there, settles in our hearts. And we are at the same time obeying because Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And those that follow me, I know my sheep because they listen to me. We have to not only hear the word of the Lord, but we have to obey. We have to do it. If you're walking in a, in a situation where you feel like you have no love for this situation, ask the Lord to give you love because Jesus said to his disciples, they will know you by your love. The devil can try to imitate everything God has done. He tries to, but there's always something that you have to look for. Is this the Lord or is this from the devil? And one of the things that I know he cannot imitate is the pure love of God. He cannot imitate God. I don't find God, God's love in any of the religions of the world. The only place you find it is in the word of God because God is love. And uh, chapter 13 of Corinthians is beautiful. And it says you could be even prophesying. You could be even um, speaking in tongues of angels. You could be even giving your body to be burned. But if you don't have love, it is nothing. So, and then it explains to you what the love of God is. So we need to ask the Lord to give us love in situations where we don't feel any love. We're like, Lord, I'm, I can't, I just can't. And the Lord is saying, he will fill our hearts with so much love that we can love people through his love his love yes we can't we can't do anything without him but with him we can do all things i could do all things to christ who strengthens me okay so today let us have listening ears to hear what the spirit is saying because for revelation the book of revelation in the first three four chapters for it to repeat that many times we need to be listening what the lord is saying to us have a listening ear and say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. The Lord bless you today.